Hello, high riders. This is Johnny Hunkins at Popular Hot Riding Magazine. Today we are here at Outlaw Motorsports in Riverside, California with Project Valiant. Now, you've seen our Indy Cylinder Head's 500 cubic inch low deck wedge before, and it makes uh, just about shy of 660 horsepower. Well, that's going to require a whole lot of fuel and a really good fuel system is going to be needed to feed this beast. So today our mission is to install a fuel system in our Valiant and we have a brand new fuel tank and we have Aeromotive's Phantom Stealth system that we're putting in. and a whole complement of Russell Plumbing Supplies with their uh, twist lock fittings and their hoses. And of course over here we have some more aeromotive components. We have a filter, regulator, wiring harness. The unique thing about Aeromotive's Phantom system is that it basically converts a stock gas tank into a sumped race fuel system. And we are actually using a new tank because we don't want to use an old tank uh, that's 40, 45 years old. It's got rust in it, scale in it. So uh, we got this new tank from Tank Zinc uh, for about 160 bucks. And what's going to happen is uh, we're going to put a hole in this thing and using this template over here, the Aeromotive Supplies. And then what's going to happen is this foam piece is going to go inside the tank. You'll notice that at the bottom it's got a sump that's going to hold fuel near the pump pickup uh, so that when we're cornering, braking, accelerating there will always be a constant supply of fuel around the pump. Speaking of which, there is the Phantom Stealth 340 pump which is going to be supplying our motor. Ron Eschen here at Outlaw Performance is marking the spot where we're going to put the hole for the fuel pump. And you actually use the attachment for the, the top of the fuel pump to mark where your hole is going to be cut. We actually like this spot here. It's in a nice flat place on the tank and it's toward the rear. So that's going to help us uh, in a couple of ways. Aeromotive includes this aluminum template with the kit and the whole point of that is to index the holes so that you can put them exactly where you want with precision and uh, there's a little uh, uh, step to ledge right there Ron just put that in the tank show folks how that will work and uh, once Ron decides how he wants the inlet piece clocked he's going to mark those holes and, and drill them. Part of Aeromotive's ingenious phantom fuel system is this uh, foam right here and uh, it actually has to be cut to the right height so that it can still compress inside the tank but uh, fit in there without binding. So right now Ron is measuring the depth of the tank. What do we got there Ron? We have 10 inches. 10 inches. So how high does this foam have to be? Uh, they're saying add one inch to the depth of the tank so we'll cut it at 11 inches. This is the retainer ring and it's kind of cut into a C-shape so that you can get it inside the tank.
Well, the fuel pump's going to go in next, but before we put the fuel pump in, we've got to cut the fuel pump hanger to the proper length or depth. And in preparation of that, Ron is also installing the fuel pump inlet filter onto the pump prior to mounting it. Well, our fuel tank depth is 10 inches where the pump is, so it's got to be dead on with the depth. So, what do you got that set at? Uh, 10 inches, Ron? Yep. Now it's time to mark the hose and cut it. And preparing your pump assembly is basically a matter of putting the sleeve on the on the pump, which is more like a sound insulator, and then cutting the feed line to length, and then of course using a pair of uh, hose hose clamps to attach the line and attach the pump to the support. One of the things that you can't really see here is that there is a flexible elastomer that compresses that goes between the fuel tank and the pump itself. And that is uh, conforms with the shape of the tank. So that if you've got a tank with a lot of ribs uh, and there's not a, uh, you don't have the luxury like we do of having a large flat spot, it will seal the pump just fine with no problems. Well, I guess you could say the easy part is done. The part where uh, Aeromotive gives us uh, all the tools to get this handled really easily. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the tank up underneath the car. And we're actually going to see where we need to cut our access hole here. Because uh, once the tank is under the car, this is going to be uh, quite a bit taller than we have room for in there. So. Uh, we're going to find out where we need to cut there. We're going to cut uh, pretty much a square shape. Well, we're going to be using Russell Twist Lock fuel line for our fuel system here, and it is rated for 250 psi. It also uses synthetic rubber, and it's got a fabric reinforcement liner in it. It can be used with any type of fuel, alcohol, hydrocarbon-based fuel. It's good for additives, uh, pretty much anything you want to put through it. It's real durable. It connects to the AN fittings. I've actually got a couple of them uh, connected right here. Russell offers all different sizes and shapes of AN fittings with the barbed ends. They just pushes right on the end. We'll show you how it goes here later in a bit. But it's super easy to put together your fuel system using the twist lock fittings in the hose. And, um, and that's what we're using here because we actually uh, don't want a race type system which has to be replaced. Uh, typically a braided line will uh, get stiff and, and, and crack and begin to weep and leak. So this type of fuel line will last for uh, several years without having to be replaced. Well that right there is an aeromotive filter. Uh, it's a hundred micron filter. It's designed to take out all the really fine particles there before it gets to the engine. Now we've got our Russell twist lock line here coming from the tank. Uh, with uh, dash 8 which is equivalent to about a half inch diameter and from here it's going to go with some more dash 8 line to the aeromotive regulator which we're going to have in the engine compartment. Well the Russell twist lock fittings are kind of cool because they allow you to use AN fittings for the high quality plumbing job but they're really easy to assemble uh, you'll notice that on the end of the fitting you've got uh, a barb there so that when the hose goes on to it, it goes on relatively easy, but it's impossible to get off without cutting it. Um, now, when you buy this from Russell, you can also get their lubricant, which Ron has already put on the fitting there. 
and uh, it's just a matter of pushing the fitting on there. It's quite a struggle, as you will see, but uh, it's worth it because it's going to not come off. Well, Ron has used these Dash 8 Adele clamps from Russell to attach the fuel feed and return lines to our subframe connectors, which we brought you last issue, last episode. And uh, we're actually trying something here. We're go going through the cross member where, the, where the, the torsion bars used to be. Since we have the altercation front suspension, we no longer have the torsion bar. So we're using this handy dandy hole right here to route the fuel lines through. It gives it a, a nice amount of protection. And we don't have to drill any holes. This is our Aeromotive fuel pressure regulator, and uh, Aeromotive has been making fuel pressure regulators for a really long time. Uh, some of the stuff they made 15 years ago, it's still on race cars doing uh, great work. Uh, in this case, we've actually got uh, one feed line coming in, and then we're going to have split outlet between two uh, carburetors. We've got two Edelbrock 500 CFMs and then they're coming back and uh, it's going to return to the tank to the one at the bottom and of course uh, we're just getting all our Russell twist lock AN fittings set uh, oh yeah there's a gauge we want to make sure that we have a port there where we can set the fuel pressure when we're getting the engine all set up is putting the twist lock fitting on the return line now. The dash 8 feed and return lines are already attached to the aeromotive regulator with AN fittings. Now we just have to run dash 6 lines from the regulator to the carburetors now, it'll be really interesting to see if we have to move our fuel regulator and lines later on because uh, A-bodies are kind of notorious for having not a lot of room there for headers, uh, as you can see. We kind of slim on space there, and uh, we may have to move our lines and our regulator later on. But let's just hope that we, uh, we get it right on the money first time. I wanted to show you real quick what it looks like in the back here where the pump is. Obviously we, we cut that hole there in the trunk so that we have access to the phantom fuel system there. But you can see the plumbing fittings right here with the Russell twist lock lines. You have the dash A in uh, half inch inlet and outlet. Uh, going into it and then the one in the middle is a vent which is a dash six and that just uh, allows the pressure in the tank to equalize uh, that can be vented out to the atmosphere or to a canister purge in the front if you have a late model fuel injected car well that's Aeromotive's phantom fuel system for muscle cars and that's all you're gonna see for Project Valiant here for a little while we've got to take care of a couple of things uh, before we get it ready for the street. So we will have more for you later on including the header and exhaust installation and floor pan replacement. So stay tuned to Popular Hot Riding Magazine.